Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jeff Cooper, Health Commissioner at Public Health Dayton and Montgomery County. Thank you for being here today to where we can provide an update to our citizens regarding the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. We're very fortunate today to have several speakers with us to provide information as well. We have Mayor Nan Whaley from the City of Dayton, Mark Belisario from Primary Health Solutions, and Sarah Hackenbrack, President and CEO of the Greater Dayton Area Hospital Association. So starting today, it's pretty obvious we no longer need to report global and national numbers on this pandemic. Every single person out there is aware of the growing spread of this virus. We learned again today that the Ohio number is 88 confirmed cases in 19 counties. We all understand that that's not accurate in terms of the true nature of the spread of this virus because there are many many cases that are out there we simply aren't aware of them yet either they have do not have laboratory tests or they don't need a test and individuals are simply caring for their for themselves at home so for us for montgomery county we have cases no question we have cases we do not have laboratory confirmed cases but there are cases of coronavirus 19 infection in our community. We understand that. And the strategies we're using now are to control the spread of that virus. It is critical, and we've all seen the guidance and the orders over the last week or so, and they continue today from the governor. It is critical that every single person in Montgomery County adhere to those orders and guidelines, right? If you're sick, stay home. 80% of cases of this virus infection are relatively mild and can be handled by simply self-care. Stay home if you're sick. The advice is similar to flu. You know when you're sick, stay home, get plenty of rest, plenty of fluids. If those symptoms worsen, they become severe. You, your body tells you when that's the case, call your doctor. Your doctor will advise you. Testing, let's make sure, because we have a limited number of tests right now, test kits, let's make sure we reserve those test kits for those most in need. So individuals, severe, critical condition, and are those who are hospitalized. We all understand what it is in terms of prevention. We've said at every single news conference, wash your hands frequently, soap and water, if not alcohol-based sanitizer, do not touch your face. Keep your hands away from your face. And it's a new reality for all of us, social distancing. We have restrictions on our movement as individuals and a society that we have never witnessed before. And that's not easy to accept, but we each have a responsibility to comply with those orders and we comply to protect each other. This is not about individuals. This is about protecting the greater good, all of us helping each other. We saw additional locations added today by the governor. Bureau of Motor Vehicle Sites, approximately 180, 181 will close. Barbershops, salons, tattoo parlors. And the governor was very clear today in his guidance to businesses whether it's retail, manufacturing, service, or nonprofits, is asking us to monitor daily the temperature of our employees as they report to work. That's unprecedented in this country. Clean surfaces in the work environment. Limit in-person meetings. It's probably pretty clear right now that most organizations have implemented their continuity of operations plan They've identified their mission essential per persons and individuals. Everyone else is telecommuting or uh, working from home. So um, we all have to adhere to those recommendations. It's a new way of life. We just don't know how long that's gonna last, but we have to do what's necessary to prevent the spread of this virus. So a lot of the guidance is evolving very rapidly. It's almost impossible to keep up with it, but there are some things that are constant. I think that's what's important for us to focus on as a community. We know how the virus spreads. Close contact, respiratory droplet. We know the symptoms. 
fever, cough, shortness of breath. We know what to do when sick, right? Stay home. That also includes household members who may not be sick, but who have been exposed to you. If you're sick in the home, stay home. Everyone else in the home, stay home from work as well. We cannot spread this to the workplace. We know who's most at risk, elderly individuals, individuals with underlying health problems, and or individuals who are immunocompromised. We know how to prevent illness. Cover your cough, wash your hands, keep your hands away from your face. And we all understand now what's needed for social distancing. But I think equally important, we also know that our response stru structure in this community, all response partners are working together. That's critical to the success of this community in responding to this pandemic. We know that we're making very difficult decisions and we're doing those decisions in a, in a very short time frame, but they're all designed to assure that everyone remains healthy and safe. And I think lastly, what perhaps is most important, we all need to stay positive. And we need to help each other during this time of uncertainty. And with that, we'll turn it over to Mayor Nan Whaley for some comments. Thank you, Commissioner, and appreciate you all reminding all of us to give each other some grace and space during this time. I, I'm we're gonna be very brief today. There's not a lot of new updates. Wanna just, again, uh, I know there's some folks that maybe are a little bored or have a lot more free times on their hand and are completely healthy and are not in any of those um, um, areas where they uh, should stay home if they're older, but you know, people my age that are healthy and uh, completely have their children figured out, which I know is probably not the case, but still. I want to really encourage them, if they can, to go give blood. A lot of the blood centers does a lot of remotes, and because those have been closed, they really can't do those, so they're asking people to come to their site downtown. Uh, again, these are pretty sa very safe places because they're blood donation sites, so there's lots of sanitizing all the time there. I did that the, today, and it's a good opportunity to help help folks when you really want to give some help. The second thing I would recommend is, again, we've put this fund together from the Dayton Foundation. Again, you can go to my Facebook site or to the Dayton Foundation to donate uh, as we prepare to help those that are in need. Uh, I just got off the phone with United States Senator Sherrod Brown as they're working through their package. I'm hopeful that there'll be some relief for people in our community uh, and we'll continue to advocate on behalf of the citizens of this region to make sure that we get what we need during this unprecedented time where work has been disrupted uh, pretty incredibly. Uh, I wanna just commend again Public Health Dayton and Montgomery County for doing such great leadership of bringing everybody together, of uh, the hospitals all working together, uh, you know, as we get prepared for this uh, pandemic to come upon us, which is already here, uh, I think we as a, a community has, have done great work to make sure that we've put everything aside and just really work to focus and that's been under public health leadership and they've done a terrific job. With that, stay safe everybody, wash your hands, cough into your elbow, and have a good day. Would like to introduce Mark Belisario from Primary Health Solutions. You know, the, the past couple of press conferences, we had the question asked, well, what happens if someone needs to see their doctor and they don't have a physician? And so we've been working over the last several days to identify, identify opportunities to increase capacity within our health care system to where individuals have the ability to, to get in to see a doctor. So we're, we'll turn this over to Mark Belisario. Thank you. Um, I just want to come here and make sure that everybody knows uh, Primary Health Solutions is a federally qualified health center and we do see people on a sliding fee scale. We're relatively new to the community, so we have a lot of capacity. Um, there will not be any problem getting an appointment with us. Uh, we're located at 300 Forest Avenue across from Grandview Hospital. Um, and one of the things that we're doing is we are pre-screening patients when they call and if you appear to have symptoms for coronavirus, we will offer you a telehealth visit, which means uh, we'll get your name and number, we'll get you registered, um, and then we will call, uh, set an appointment with you and we will do the visit to, um, over a video conference call. 
If it appears that you have symptoms and you need to go for testing, then we will write you an order uh, for the test and send you to the appropriate testing site. Um, again, we're on 300 Forest Avenue, across from Grandview Hospital, and our telephone number is 937-535-5060, or you can call 513-454-1111 to get scheduled for an appointment. So we have plenty of appointments available, uh, we have access, and we do take new patients, so if you've not been a patient with us, we will take you for that first appointment. Thank you. Now we have Sarah Hackenbrack from the Greater Dayton Area Hospital Association. Thank you. Good afternoon. As the mayor and health commissioner have mentioned, obviously our hospitals have been working in close concert over the last couple of months in preparation for the novel coronavirus and that work continues. Our calls and our meetings that are taking place virtually now are happening on a daily basis and our hospital leadership are touching base through our meetings as well as with one another directly on a very regular basis to make sure that we're working in close coordination with one another in preparation for the weeks and the months ahead. And again, as we continue to look at where we are as the state of Ohio, we recognize that there are a number of people who believe that they have either been exposed to the novel coronavirus or that they are concerned about the novel coronavirus. And so it's very important to still remember that not everyone in our community will need to be tested for COVID-19. It's very important again to understand that the number of tests that we have available to the state of Ohio and allocated in this community are truly meant for those for whom the test is medically necessary. And that means that you're someone who would potentially be admitted into the hospital. So that means that you're someone who is having a very high fever and significant issues breathing before we can really admit you and test you for COVID-19. And so I really implore the, the listening audience as well as our empo employer community to understand that this is not a test that you can ask for simply by walking into your doctor's office or by walking into the emergency department. Your physician has to either see you over the telephone, um, like Dr. Belisario has mentioned that they're willing to do through primary health solutions or through your traditional primary care office. And that collaboration and cooperation is going to be what helps our hospitals remain prepped and ready for the anticipated surge that we anticipate for this particular situation. So before we go to questions, we do have a couple of additional announcements. Public health, Dayton and Montgomery County and our programs and services are not immune from this issue as well. And yes, we are public servants, However, our primary responsibility also is to protect our own employees. And so we've been forced to make some very difficult decisions around, around service provision as we move forward. So we'll begin to update all that information on our website and it'll be available to the public. First, we'd like to announce that we have suspended now our birth and de death records in-person uh, service requests. So, we can do that by telephone and or citizens can go to www.vitalcheck.com to continue to request those records, but in-person service requests we are suspending and similar information is available on our website for funeral homes that are, that are requesting those death certificates. Additionally, our women, infants and children program, yes, it needs to continue because it provides vital service to mothers and infants. However, parents and legal guardians based on state guidance are no longer required to bring infants to the visit. We just need documentation to be brought for those infants. And we're asking clients that come to our WIC centers to limit the number of individuals that come for that visit. So we're really trying to adhere to the social distancing measures. So as we make additional changes to our service provision, we'll make sure that information is on our website. And with that, we, I think our group here would be happy to answer any questions. Yes, Mr. Bill, what have you been able to learn about the, um, the case at the Dayton We'll have Mickey Doan, our medical director, answer that. We, we've been informed about that, we know about it, we've been following it. 
the, it's not a resident of Montgomery County, so the responsibility really falls to Clark County, which as I understand just had a press release and is gonna have an event at six tonight. Um, you know, as we talk about community spread, you have to realize Dayton is a metropolitan city and that we've got someplace around, I forget, what is it, 80, 80,000 people a day? Something like that, that transit into Montgomery County or out of Montgomery County for work. So that as we get cases around the county, we're gonna have people that are coming here for their physician, uh, that they may be here for work, that uh, there's a lot of transit across those borders. And so I think on a regional basis, we kind of have to think about this is just gonna happen. And when we get a case here, they may well work someplace else or vice versa. So I think I would live, you know, if you want specifics on that, you just need to talk to Clark County about it. Is there anything else in specific of, about that? In terms of any demographic indication or anything like that, you know, conditions, that sort of thing, would that come from? Yeah, that would come from them. Are there any results back from the testing yesterday? Nothing positive. <laughs> Does that help? There are, I don't know if we've got any results back. We would hear public health now is only getting uh, informed about positive results so that we don't know if all those people yesterday already tested negative. I doubt if all those results are back, but we only know about positive results. Okay. Good day today. All right. Yeah. Um, I do have one more question. When it comes to HIPAA laws and stuff, we've had a lot of viewers um, curious as to know like what city some of these people are, you know, that have been tested positive live in. What kind of information can that you guys provide about those particular patients who do test positive? Yeah. One of the one of the things is we want to protect people's privacy and confidentiality, and there's with a certain amount of information. For instance, you know, age, sex, uh, race, and city. You can narrow things down pretty carefully. Okay. If you look at um, police runs or other sorts of things, you can narrow things down again. And so that, that it doesn't take very much information so that because of that and to protect people's confidentiality and because this is going to be widespread eventually, okay, the decision by the state is to simply talk about county and not to give anything more specific than that. Epidemiologically, the epidemiologists know they can identify people with very little information, okay? And I think we've all, thought about somebody or somebody we used to know or something, you get on, on Google and you look them up and you can find them, you know, without much information. And so I think that uh, to try and protect that, the decision has been made not to get any more specific than the county. And again, to reiterate the point we made every day, it's all around us anyway, so. You good? All right. Stay safe. Stay safe.